ओके ओके मैम थैंक यू दक्षिणा सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता स्मरिया गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुरा आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्तिद विभागिने व्योमद्याप्तहाय दक्षिणाूर्त नम पिज्ञाश्रम श्रीगुरशंक पिज्ञाश्रम शंकर सद्गु केशववामन कृष्ण पांडुरंग आनंद परिज्ञान गुरु सद्यो जात शंकर सद्गु गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओं सहनावत सहनौ भुन सह वीर वह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मा विषा वह ओं शांति 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 चांदि शांति पाठ भद्रम कर्णे शृणुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्येक्षजत्रा स्थिंगुष्टुवागम सस्तनु व्यशेम देवित यदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नो अरिष्ट स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ शांति 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 एज ए सेड इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव कंप्लीटेड फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ मुंडकोपनिषद एज वी सेट एज वी सॉ दैट मुंडकोपनिषद हैज टू मुंडकास एंड ईच मुंडका हैज थ्री खंडस so we completed the first mundaka with all the three khandas then we completed also you know the, sorry the two three mundakas with two khandas each and then we saw that we completed the first mundaka in the second mundaka also the first khanda we have completed so there are actually three mundakas each mundaka means each chapter has got two khandas now we are in the second khanda of the second mundaka and as i said in the last session what is it that this particular section dealing with what is the content of this particular section the first thing is that i think i mean it is said that this particular khanda that is the second mundaka second khanda is actually the most important khanda because it contains the central teaching of the entire upanishad so what is the content of this particular khanda or section the second chapter and the second section what is the content of this it shows what is the swarupam of this brahman that aksharam brahma what was the question that was asked by the shishya that is shaunaka to the teacher angiras what is it by knowing which everything is as well as known and therefore the whole teaching of all these three khandas that we have seen dealt with nothing but what this particular brahman or aksharam is aksharam is the name for brahman which is specifically used in mundakopanishad this is the word that is used for brahman or paramatma atma that is the word used here that is what is it it is what is called as the aksharam brahma and in the first two verses of this section which we saw in the last session we found 
the Swarupa Chaitanyam of this Brahman. What is the Swarupa? What is it that is the inherent nature of this Brahman? That was what was talked about. And to just summarize the immediate last verse, that is the second Mundaka, second Khanda and the second Mantra which we had already taken and we had completed, we had stopped with this. But then what is it that it is saying? The second mantra of the second khanda, what is it saying? The nature of which, the nature of this Aksharam Brahma, which we have been discussing. What does it talk about? Yad archimat, yad anubhyo ho anuho, cha, yasmin loka nihita loki nascha, tadetat aksharam brahma, sa pranaha, tadu vang manaha. Then tadetat satyam tad amritam tad vedhavyam somya vidhi. That's what we saw. Now let us take only the last line of this mantra and summarize it. It says, the Guru says, I have already talked about the very swarupam of Brahman in the previous khanda. What is the meaning of swarupam? Inherent nature. What is the meaning of inherent nature? That which doesn't change, that which remains all the time. And that was what was talked about here in the first two verses. And in the second verse, the Guru ends it ultimately with Tadetat Satyam. That Brahman or that Aksharam is actual Paramarthika Satyam. That is the ultimate reality. All else everything else is nothing but an apparent reality everything else that we come across is nothing but mithya mithya means what experiential reality apparent reality not the absolute reality what is brahman that is the only thing that is there ekam advitiyam brahma Ekameva Advitiyam, another Upanishad describes this Brahman. What is the meaning of this? There is one and the only without a second. Whatever is existing, that is called as Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, Brahma. Tadetat Satyam, the meaning of this is, this is the ultimate truth, the Paramarthika Satyam. That which is the most auspicious. That which does not change. What is the meaning of satyam or sat? That which exists in all three periods of time. It does not mean that Brahman was not there before. It appeared with the world and it is going to disappear with the world. No. Even before this creation was projected by Maya, what existed was only Brahman. What is Brahman? This consciousness existence. That which provides or that which infuses everything with the satta or existence and spurti or consciousness. Satta spurti pradayaka ekameva satyam paramartika satyam. That was or that is and that is nothing but Brahman. Tad yetad satyam. That Brahman is the ultimate truth which exists in all three periods of time. Tadetat Satyam. Tad Amritam. Amritam means what? That which is immortal. That which doesn't have the Shad Vikaras of Asti, Jayate, Vardate, Viparinamate, Apakshiyate, Vinashyati. No. The Shad Vikaras or the six changes or the Vikaras we see in the anatma prapancha is only there for anatma it is not there for this atma chaitanyam or brahman therefore it is something which was never born something which is never going to disappear this is what is called as amritam the nature of brahman the very inherent swarupam of brahman is it is always existing nityam Amritam means what? Immortal. Immortal means what? Nityam. Nityam means what? That which has existed in all three periods of time. Trikale Apitishthati. 
and what is the meaning of nityam what is the meaning of that which is trikale apitishtati it means that is the only thing which has absolute existence therefore it is called as sat tad etad amritam tad vedhavyam somya vidhi and here the guru says hey wonderful student hey somya tad vedhavyam that is what is to be struck that is what is to be struck means what that is what is to be understood very clearly may you know hey somya vidhi may you know that you have to know this sat nityam sat swarup atma alone and knowing that is going to really solve all your samsara problems and your question which you asked what is it that by knowing which everything else is as good as known it is this brahman or this atma which is to be known vedhavyam a word is being used here vedhavya means what that is which is to be targeted that is what is that which is to be actually struck why is it that such a term is being used here why is the upanishad using the word vedavyam that which is to be targeted or struck why is this word being used because the upanishad is going to talk about a particular imagery in the next two verses giving us the upaya of how to know this brahman so as a prelude or as an introduction as an introduction to the next two verses the third verse and the fourth verse the upanishad is going to talk about the student or the mumukshu tad vedavyam it is this brahman which should be known it is this brahman which should be understood in its swarupam and it is this brahman which should be struck vedavyam so now what is the next two verses which we are talking about let me give you an introduction to these two verses and then we'll see what these verses really talk about now the nature of brahman the inherent nature swarupam of brahman has been talked about and also the teacher says it is to be known it is to be hit it is to be struck means it is to be understood very clearly that is the target which is to be understood very very clearly if that is so how is it to be understood this brahman being the most subtle that which is not available for any sense organs or the mind because this brahman is the anubhyo anubhu we saw that in the previous verse in this verse itself the first line yad archimat anubhyo anubhu that which is smaller than the smallest subtler than the subtlest it is not an object of the sense organs it's not an object of the mind it's not something that the words can describe because it's not an object as we see in the world outside if such is the subtlety of this brahman and there is no other go other than knowing this brahman to get rid of my samsara there should be an upaya there should be some method of knowing this isn't it when we say something is very difficult but it has to be achieved then what do we do we find out ways and means of achieving it this is what is called as an upaya there is an upaya something which is very heavy there is a rock there is a big stone it has to be lifted and transferred to some other place nobody can lift it then what do we do we use some other upaya what kind of an upaya either we use a lever you know to shift it to move it or we have this present heavy earth moving vehicles which will lift up the stone and then take it to the place where it is necessary so this is an upaya correct 
I want this stone to be shifted from here to there. I cannot do it. 100 people, workers cannot do it because it is weighing tons and tons. Then what do I do about it? I have to find a way of shifting it. And I find a way. This is what is innovation. This is what is all scientific discoveries. When something has to be done and it is not possible in the usual way, we try to find out different methods, newer methods of doing what we cannot do but needs to be done. Similarly, Brahman is also something which is to be known. It is that Nyayam which is Nyatavyam. Bhagavan Krishna says in the 13th chapter that the only thing that is worth knowing is this Brahman. Because this is the ultimate truth of myself. This is the ultimate truth of the entire world. This is the ultimate truth of Ishvara also. And unless I know this ultimate truth in its entirety, in its real nature, it is not possible for me to get rid of this Bheda. What Bheda? Jeeva Jeeva Bheda, Jeeva Jagat Bheda, Jeeva Ishvara Bheda. All these differentiations, I am different from others. I am different from God. I am different from the world. This Bheda is what is causing me all my samsara. We have already seen that. So then if that is so, what is the upaya that the Upanishad suggests? What is that trick by which one can know this Atman or Brahman in its absolute form? Paramar Paramarthikataya. The Paramarthika Satyam of Brahman. How is it to be known? And our Upanishads say the most important upaya of understanding this Brahman is Omkara. We saw that in Kathopanishad also. Omkara used as a symbol. It is a, it is a symbol. It's a pratika. Om represents the Saguna Brahman Ishvara also. It represents the Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahma without any Upadhi is the Nirguna Brahman also. Omkara can be used for Upasana to develop the Chitta Shuddhi and Chitta Neshchalyam as the ultimate nature of Ishvara. Omkara can be used as a vichara for Nirguna Brahma vichara. We saw that in Katopanishad. Here in Mundakopanishad, the same upaya of understanding Omkara is given. Now let us understand what is this Om. Very briefly I will tell you. What is this Om? And why is it that so many Upanishads talk about Omkara Vichara as the way or the Upaya of knowing Brahman? Now let us look at this, you know, this particular sound symbol, the sound symbol called as Om. Now let us look at it from the point of view of how it has come about. How it has come about. What is the Vyutpatti? What is it grammatically? What is the meaning of Om? Don't worry, I'm not going to, you know, take you into this, the grammatical aspect in detail. But Om comes from the root verb called Au. Ava, Au. Ava means what? Rakshanarthe, Rakshanarthe, Au, Rakshanarthe. That which protects. Okay. And by a series of adding certain other sounds to it and certain other syllables to it, this au dhatu or this au verbal root gets converted into o. So, grammatically also, o means that which protects. That which protects me from what? With the saguna upasana or Ishvara upasana using om as a omkara upasana, it protects me, it prepares my intellect for the further knowledge. That is what is further knowledge means Jnana Yoga for the ultimate knowledge of Brahman. With Omkara Vichara, that is 
doing analysis of om inquiry into this om it deals me with details me it leads me sorry to this ultimate understanding of brahman so grammatically it is the most auspicious symbol it is that which protects that is why we add om to everything whenever we chant anything we start with om whenever we do japa we start with om it is said that lord brahma when he created this entire universe the first word which he used was om in the 17th chapter of bhagavad gita we saw what is om what is tat and what is sat om tat sat we saw the meaning of these three words and omkara is supposed to be om is supposed to be the most auspicious symbol so this is what we can say from the grammatical point of view it is used as a symbol as a phonetic symbol for understanding of vedas upasanataya or even by knowledge or inquiry so this is the first aspect secondly if we take om from the phonetic aspect let us see om from the point of view of phonetic aspect om has actually three letters a u and m m okay these three but we never pronounce om as aum no it should not be pronounced like that though it is a plus u plus m the pronunciation is om many people pronounce it as aum no that is not correct om is the correct pronunciation though it has got three parts a u and m okay now our vedas say that the entire prapancha is existing between in these three letters how is it when we open our mouth how do we open our mouth a ah. so when we open our mouth and make a sound a ah comes first correct okay then all the other words all the other letters when this a is pronounced with the lips pursed together u mm. a u mm. it is the same a uh, which when the mouth the lips are pursed becomes the u mm, which involves all the other letters and words and when we close the mouth u mm, all the words all the letters get absorbed in me silence after that till i open my mouth again so between the opening of the mouth with a uh, and expansion of everything all the words expansion or seeing the entire universe which is u and closing the mouth m mm, which means everything is counted so between the opening of the mouth and closing of the mouth the entire world of words is there correct there are no words without a u and m that is why when a child starts opens the mouth it is a it cries with a and when it opens it when it closes its mouth it ends with m mm. and that is the reason why the mother who is the entire world for the infant we call it as amma mama whatever so this is opening of the mouth and then closing of the mouth the entire universe or the world of the infant in the form of the mother is there similarly when we open our mouth with a uh, and close our mouth with ma the entire universe is there in this therefore this om represents the entire manifest universe okay phonetically and when you say when you we are near silent and when nothing is said mm, then 
the whole thing is back into me with a the whole world appears with u there is a sthiti of the whole world with u the whole universe is literally resolved back into me so this is what is phonetically the importance of o now taking these two how is om considered to be an upasana or vichara in our upanishads that is mentioned by certain upanishads like mandukya upanishad which deal with the entire omkara vichara to understand the nature of brahman it is the the you know om iti etat sarvam this entire thing is nothing but omkara it is nothing but opening of the mouth where the whole world is and then resolution of the whole universe with the closing of the mouth so according to the upanishads now scripturally we will see the significance of om we saw grammatically or linguistically we saw first second one we saw phonetically what is this om third scripturally according to our scriptures our vedas what is the meaning of this om what does it mean our scriptures say that om represents everything om iti etat sarvam everything that is there is nothing but this omkara our upanishads say that when these a u m and the silence we take it as four matras a u m mm, and then the silence before the next om is chanted so this cycle continues a is one matra u is one matra m mm is one matra silence one matra again a u m silence a u m silence Om, Om, Om. This is how it is chanted. Our Upanishads say that the four matras of the Om Kara represent the three avastas of the mind, the three avastas of the jiva. A Kara represents the Jagrat avasta and the Jagrat prapancha. ukara represents the swapna prapancha and the swapna jiva swapna jiva and swapna prapancha umkara um represent the sushupta jiva and avidya or you know karana shariram or prakriti and the silence represents what that consciousness which is avasthatraya sakshi we have seen avasthatraya sakshi that consciousness existence atma brahman which is behind the jagrat avastha that which is behind the swapna avastha that which is behind the sushupti avastha is one changeless constant consciousness which does not change that is why we are able to understand that it is the same me who was awake it is the same i who went to sleep it is the same i who dreamt this dream it is the same i who fell asleep and when i wake up i say i am the same person who was awake yesterday till 10 o'clock went to sleep and i dreamt of all these things and then after some time i don't know what happened i was absolutely completely ignorant of everything and now i have got up so what is the silence the silent matra is that consciousness which is what is called as the turiyam that which is behind all the changing states of the mind or the jiva so mandukya upanishad does a very very great inquiry especially the karika gauda pada karika of mandukya upanishad does a detailed inquiry on the akara 
as the jagrit jeeva jagrit prapancha pair the ukara as the swapna jeeva swapna prapancha pair the umkara as the sushupta jeeva and sushupta or the karana prapancha pair and then ultimately it comes to the inquiry that ultimately that because of which all these three are is nothing but the turiyam and this turiyam is what that is the silent matra of this omkara and therefore the inquiry of omkara is done how in the lines of mandukya upanishad which is a very 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 tense and which is a very terse upanishad and that is what gives me the methodology of understanding the atma swarupam as avastha traya sakshi understanding this atman or brahman to be the ultimate consciousness and the jagrit swapna sushupti avastas being nothing but changing mithya natures of the jiva or the mind at the same time the upanishad say before going to the inquiry of this omkara one has to be ready for this om this inquiry omkara vichara simply cannot happen by everybody unless the intellect is prepared therefore omkara also represents om also represents ishvara in the saguna form that is why when i say om hanumate namaha i say om i say om namah shivaya om i say you can chant om alone also but for that it has to be omkara upasana omkara japa is basically it is chanted by the sanyasis or when this omkara is given specifically as a japa by the guru because plain simple chanting of omkara alone is supposed to give you give one a lot of vairagya and when one is not prepared for this this may not work and therefore it is said that om is to be added before we start chanting any other mantra you see in the in the in the vedas every mantra starts with om we saw today also om bhadram karne bhishnu nyam deva isn't it so om is something the most auspicious which is also representing the brahman with the form saguna ishvara and om can be used for upasana as japa along with my other japa that i am doing which helps me in getting the grace of ishvara so omkara represents the saguna ishvara for getting the grace of ishvara or my ishta devata to prepare myself for this knowledge omkara vichara when i am prepared for this knowledge on the lines of the mandukya upanishad helps me to understand that i am nothing but this turiya atma the silent matra unchanging silent matra or the turiya it's not an avastha turiyam is not an avastha turiyam is the ultimate consciousness we say jagrat avastha swapna avastha sushupti avastha Turiyam is not an avastha because that is the thing which is constantly there. Avastha means what? That which changes. Now I am awake. Sometime I am dreaming. For some time I am sleeping. So these avasthas are changing. But what is turiyam? Avastha traya sakshi. Therefore, omkara can be taken and understood in these three ways. That is from the point of view of the language linguistically from the point of view of phonetics and from the point of view of scriptural importance of omkara with this now we'll come to the verses where mundaka upanishad takes omkara as an alambanam as the sound the symbol for brahman and it says that how we are supposed to actually do the omkara vichara 
that is what is given by this upanishad by a wonderful example or a wonderful imagery of archery mundaka upanishad is famous for two imageries one is the archery imagery and the other one is the bird imagery so we have here the archery imagery where brahman is taken as omkara swarupa and then these two verses the third verse and the fourth verse start and talk about how one is to know this brahman using omkara as the upaya omkara as the lever which can help us in understanding this very very subtle brahman that is what is talked about in the third and fourth verses which we will take up today so let us go to the third verse of the second mundaka and second section dhanurgrihitva aupanishadam mahastram sharam hyupasa nishitam sandhayita ayam yatad bhavagate na chetasa laksham tadevaksharam somya vidhi so what does it say it says first here it doesn't talk about omkara it will come in the next verse he says let you were let the let me take up an archery example that's what it says the upanishad says he says may you use the bow of what is described in the upanishads so dhanuhu grahitva when you want to strike a target what do you do you strike a target with an arrow correct and where is the arrow starting from the arrow cannot by itself go and strike a target the arrow has to be mounted on a bow and then the arrow has to be released from the bow to hit the target now this example is taken here and the bow has to be strong enough isn't it if you want to strike a target which is very very subtle and a target which is far away a difficult target you have to have a bow which is strong enough you should have an arrow which is not only strong enough but prepared enough and it should be sharp enough that is what is going to be dealt with here so he says dhanur grihitva aupanishadam mahastram mahastram okay one has to have a mahastra means what a very strong kind of a you know astra okay are a very strong kind of a base for your astra which is the arrow and what is that the bow i hold the bow in my hand release the arrow and that bow should not be shaky that bow should not be a plastic bow which is going to fall if we have a very weak bow how far will this this one go you know arrow goes we have seen that in you know school dramas and all when they do historical dramas mythological dramas a plastic bow is given to the child and is asked to release an arrow which just falls not even one foot away from him correct so aupanishadam mahastram this dhanu who should be a strong dhanu which should not slip from the hand which should be strong enough to let the arrow or release the arrow and what can be more strong or what can be stronger than that which is explained in the upanishads dhanur grahitva aupanishadam what is it that is discussed in the upanishads it is the omkara so here he says in the next verse he'll make it very clear that this dhanu dhanus is nothing but omkara so he says aupanishadam mahastram dhanu grihitva may you hold on to the omkara which has been talked about as a representative of the whole universe 
as that which represents saguna brahman that is brahman with the form in the form of my ishta devata and also that which represents the satyam jnanam anantam subtlest of the subtle brahman which is the jagat karana correct so may you hold on for your inquiry to this omkara which is that which is described in detail in mandukya upanishad and other upanishads and hold on to that tightly upanishadam mahastram sharam hi upasa nishitam sandhayita may you the jivatma or the mind the intellect of the mumukshu be the shara may that be the arrow and what kind of an arrow is it the arrow should be sharp to hit the target if the arrow is blunt it is not going to pierce the target correct if the arrow is crooked it is not going to go to the place where you want it will not reach the target so what should be the sharam the sharam or the arrow should be straight it should be sharp what is the meaning of this it means i the jivatma or this intellect which is represented by the sharam which is represented by the arrow by karma yoga and upasana yoga has to be straight sadhana chatushtaya sampatti should be that karma yogena chitta shuddhi should be that upasana yogena chitta naischalyam should be there which is the meaning of a sharp arrow when my intellect is prepared with chitta shuddhi and chitta naischalyam by karma yoga and upasana yoga then this sharpened straight by sadhana chatushtaya sampatti by shamadamadi shatka sampatti viveka vairagya shamadamadi shatka sampatti and tivra mumukshutvam i have made my arrow straight it should not be you know an arrow which is crooked that is not possible therefore sharam what is the sharam this intellect which is supposed to understand this brahman this jivatma who is supposed to understand this brahman is compared to an arrow sharam hi and what kind of a sharam sharam means arrow उपासनाशित that means what may you bring together may you join may you mount this buddhi or intellect which is to know this brahman in contact with the upanishadam what is discussed in the upanishads which is the bow nothing but omkara and what is this it is the jnana yoga correct a prepared intellect which has to expose its intellect with itself to jnana yoga expose itself to the teachings of the upanishad and hit the target of brahman hit means what no brahman for that the intellect should be sharp enough which is compared to the shara the intellect of this jivatma the intellect of this mumukshu who wants to know the ultimate paramarthika satyam is the arrow this is an imagery it's an example and what is it that i have to bring this arrow in contact with upanishadam that which is discussed in the upanishads okay and what is it that is talked about in the upanishads as an upaya for knowing this brahma omkara let omkara be the dhanu let my intellect i the mumukshu the intellect of me the jivatma is required to understand this let me prepare my intellect 
and make it as sharp and straight as an arrow like arjuna's arrow and let the upanishadam mahastram omkara be my gandhiva by which what do i do i strike the target of brahman so what is the target here knowing brahman understanding brahman is the target so what does he say आयम्य तद्भावगते न चेतसा लक्ष्यम तदेव अक्षरम व्हाट इज द लक्ष्यम व्हाट इज द टारगेट अक्षरम ब्रह्म आई हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट दिस अक्षरम ब्रह्म इज सो अक्षरम इज माय टारगेट ओमकारा इज द बो व्हिच इज डिस्क्राइब्ड इन द उपनिषद इट्स नॉट अ सिंपल ओमकारा डिस्क्राइब्ड बाय समबडी नो इट हैज द प्रमाण ऑफ द उपनिषद it has got the proof of the upanishads that it is only omkara vichara ultimately which can really make you understand you yourself as the avastha treya sakshi therefore omkara which is the central point of discussion of omkara vichara in upanishads i make it as the bow as the support and this intellect i the mumukshu use this intellect with the help of the guru to strike the lakshyam called as brahman and how should this this arrow or this this particular intellect should be you know literally directed towards the target he says ayamya tad bhavagate na chetasa whenever an arrow has to be released we have to give it the momentum how by drawing the arrow backwards using the string of the bow the arrow is drawn backwards ayamya the further the arrow has to go that much back i have to pull this arrow ayamya so how do i pull this arrow called as the intellect ayamya means what vairagyena viveka vairagya sadhana chatushtaya sampatti rupena ayamya withdrawing myself i am here means what taking it backwards pulling my sense organs and intellect intellect from the world of objects as much as possible inside avritta chakshu amritatvam ichhan we saw that in kathopanishad so just i can't start somewhere and put this you know that's not possible i have to pull the arrow backwards to generate sufficient amount of momentum and force so that the arrow goes and strikes the object or the lakshyam and what is this ayamya drawing back withdrawing my mind withdrawing my intellect from all the worldly activities as much as possible we are all grahasthas but at the same time we are mumukshus we are studying the upanishads i am ya means let me do what is necessary in this world whenever it is necessary when it is not necessary let me not get involved unnecessarily in the worldly transactions let me learn to be silent withdrawn from the world when it's not necessary so that i develop the habit of retreating from the world of objects that is uparama shama dama all the chadana chatushtaya sampatti ayamya tad bhavagatena concentrating on that lakshya bhavagatena then what should i do lakshyam tadeva aksharam somya vidhi strike and it should be stuck in such a way that ultimately the arrow becomes one with the target it does not fall away that is it otherwise what is the use the arrow hits the target and falls then what is the use the arrow should hit the target and the arrow should not fall down that is the ultimate that means what i should understand the paramarthika satyam brahma once and for all it should not be an incomplete effort i go till there and come back and fall no just like a well prepared or a well sharpened and straight arrow
cannot be separated if it is properly you know struck to the object it cannot be repeat, separated sometimes when you try to remove the arrow that wooden portion behind may come out but that iron triangle which is there in the front remains in the target that means what that is jivatma paramatma aikyam that is what the target and the arrow the, the tip of the arrow have become one inseparable from each other means what we are already inseparable but we do not know that so when we say inseparable means i have understood very clearly that this arrow and this laksha are not different from each other they have they are one they have become one of course the arrow and uh, you know the target they were not one before now it is there example only has to be taken to a certain extent but once i the intellect the jivatma or the arrow becomes one with the target brahman there's no question of it coming back again if you say no i know i am brahmasmi i have already hit the target of brahman but what to do i am still a samsari that means i have not hit the target that means i do not know myself correctly i have heard it is paroksha gnanam that sort it is just words in my yes i know i have studied so many upanishads i have studied prasthanatraya aham brahmatmi i know very well but then i am still a samsari this is a problem that's a problem this is a problem what does it mean it means that abhedam has not clearly been understood therefore he says let the bow be that of omkara vichara as explained in the upanishads let the intellect of the mukshu me be like an arrow which is straightened and which is sharpened by karma yoga upasana yoga and that which is pulled at the time of jnana yoga on the string of the bow of omkara that means withdrawing my intellect as much as possible from the worldly activities outside and then strike this arrow or this intellect with the target in such a way that aham brahmasmi becomes or is absolutely clear there is no question of doubt it becomes a doubtless knowledge so here we have to understand that in the third verse the laksham is brahman aksharam brahma Upanishadam Mahastram is the Omkara Vichara as given in the Upanishad. And the one Sharam which strikes is nothing but the intellect of the person who is a Mumukshu. Then who is the one who is striking it? The Guru with the Jeevatma. The Jeevatma with the help of the Guru targets his intellect in Jnana Yoga to understand this. This is the example which is given as to what is what then in the next verse we'll see in the next verse what does it say vidhi means may you strike then in the fourth verse the same thing is told but very clearly told as to what is what so we'll read this pranavo dhanuhu sharohi atma brahmata laksham uchate अप्रमत्ते नवेदव्यम् शरवत तन्मयो भवेत् So what is the meaning of this? Very clearly now Mundaka Upanishad clearly says let there not be any confusion. What is this Aupanishadam Dhanuhu which I have taken for support? He says Pranavo Dhanuhu Pranavaha Omkara. Another name for Omkara is Pranav. So we have already seen that Brahman is also called Om. Omkara is also indicating Brahman. Omkara indicates Ishvara. Omkara indicates Atma. Omkara indicates this entire Jagat. That's why Mandukya Upanishad starts the first verse with Om Iti Etat Sarvam. Yad Bhutam Bhavyam. That which was, which is, which is going to be. Yetat Sarvam, 
everything that is there. The manifest world is Omkara. The unmanifest subtle Karanam of this world is Omkara. So if you know how to analyze this Om, then you know what the ultimate you know, content or the stuff of this entire universe. And when you know that, it is as though you have known everything. So here in this fourth verse it says, Pranamo Dhanuhu. This Dhanu that I am talking about, you know, the Aupanishadam Dhanuhu Mahastram Pranavaha. Omkara Upasana Rupena. Making this Shara intellect strong enough, sharp enough, straight enough. Sharohi Atma. Here Atma does not mean, you know, Satchitananda Atma. It is the very Jeevatma. The, she, the Shara is nothing but Jeevatma. Specifically, we can say the intellect of the Jeevatma. Because it is that Jeevatma, Paramatma, Aikyam or Abhedam is to be known by this intellect. So, Atma here means Sharohi Atma. The Shara or the arrow is nothing but the intellect of this Jeevatma. Brahmata Lakshamuta Lakshamuchate. Brahman is the Lakshyam or the target, that which is to be known. That which is to be struck. Apramatenavedhavyam. And when you are striking this arrow, apramatena, with full concentration, without losing your concentration, like how Arjuna strikes his arrow, which never misses the target. Apramatena. Apramatena means there should not be any pramada. There should not be any, you know, kind of neglect. Okay, I have cleared my mind. I have, this, you know, enough Chitta Shuddhi is there. Enough Chitta Naishalyam is there. I have understood what the Upanishads are talking about. The Mahastram, the Omkara. But then, what am I doing? My intellect is wavering here and there. There is no concentration. Neglect is there. So, without any neglect... Without losing one's concentration, apramattena, absolutely the intellect should be in line with, yes, this is what it is. It should not get distracted. That is apramattena vedhavyam. It is to be struck. Means what? It is to be known. Why this word vedhavyam is used? Because the example of a bow and arrow and a laksham is used. Therefore, Vedhavyam or strike is used. Vedhavyam also means it should be known like that. Therefore, he says, Apramattena Vedhavyam Sharavat Tanmayo Bhavet. Once it is hit, Sharavat Tanmayo Bhavet. The Shara becomes one with the target. Tanmaya. One with the target. You cannot separate the Shara from the target. So, let your intellect be one with the target that is Brahman, which should not fall off or come out. That means what? Very clearly, you should be able to understand what this Brahman is and there should be no confusion or recurrence of ignorance. And how that is done is not given here. That is the subject matter of Mandukya Upanishad. That is why the Upanishads are studied in a certain order. Straight away, Mandukya Upanishad is not taught. That is the last Upanishad to be taught. And Mumukshuna, Mandukya Meva Alam, it is said. For a Mumukshu, once I have understood Mandukya Upanishad, that is enough. After that, there is no need to take any other Upanishad. That is what is the convention in Vedanta teaching. So, here, he doesn't main, ma, mention anything about Mandukya Upanishad. But Mandukya Upanishad also belongs to the same Atharvana Veda to which Mundaka Upanishad belongs. What we are studying is Mundaka Upanishad. Lot of people have a great doubt about these things. What we are studying is Mundaka Upanishad. And this is very clearly explained in another Upanishad, Atharvana Veda Upanishad called as Mandukya Upanishad. So, we'll see the next verses later. These are the two very, very important verses of Upaya for understanding Brahman.
ओम नंदन तु साधका सर्वे विनश्यंतु विदूषका अवस्था शांवी मेस्तु प्रसन्नोस्तु गुरुस्तदा सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्यंतु मा कचि दुखम आपुया ओम शांति 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 ओम तत्सत